Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw the water section of this portrait that I was asked to do last year. If you would like to see this in considerably slower footage, the nearly 4 hour version is on my Patreon now, so I'll link that in the description below. So this was the first time that I had attempted any kind of water with pastels, but I knew I wanted to break it down in the same way that I do with any other portrait. So that is by working in small areas and I take individual layers and really do strip it back. I do find that this makes the element of regardless of what it is that you're working on far less challenging and certainly less daunting. And water is one of those parts of the portrait where you wouldn't necessarily know where to start. I know when I first looked at this reference photo it was a little bit like that. I was thinking what part shall I tackle first? Do I start with my shadows and my highlights? And I just spent more time looking at that reference photo than actually drawing. Now that's totally normal, it's all part of the process. But I do certainly find by breaking it down into small areas and then individual layers you find yourself less likely to do that and you're far more productive in the way that you work. That's exactly what I've done here. So I started off with the section just underneath the, the chin itself, really just mapping in where my highlights and my shadows are. And after I'd mapped in my basic shapes I then started work with the detailing with the pastel pencils. Now my main aim for this was to make sure that I captured the movement of that water as closely to that reference photo as I possibly could. And this for this kind of water is really important, just like when we're working on the fur direction of any animal that we're drawing. And ultimately that is in the pencil strokes. So you can see here that none of my pencil details are vertical or horizontal. They all have a curvature about them and that's exactly the same when we're working on fur. Because this dog is swimming towards the viewer, it's got a lot of that water disturbance. So there is a lot more ripples here compared to a much calmer water where the dog maybe might have just been more stationary and stood in that water. So it really is going to vary depending on what's going on in that reference photo as to how much highlight and shadow is on that surface of the water. But if you're working on something like this where there is all of that movement, it's really important to make sure that you get the highlights of the ripples in the right place and that you get them as bright as they need to be and the same with the shadows. You need to make sure that they are as dark as what's, as what's needed so that then the highlights of those ripples look even brighter. Because that's something that can happen with any portrait. So if you're finding that the pencil that you're using is not showing up, quite often it's because the element next to it is not dark enough. As soon as you darken your shadows a little bit more, it will automatically then make that area that you're working on that much brighter. So that's something that will be really effective when you're working on any kind of water in your portrait. The contrast in the ripples is key, it's really really important and I speak about contrast a lot in all of my tutorials because it really does make such a difference. The colour of that portrait could be 100% spot on to that reference photo but if your contrasts are not where they need to be, the overall portrait is just going to be a bit more flat. So you want to make sure that you've got your shadows and your highlights accurate and something that can be really useful is take a photograph of your artwork, turn it into black and white and do the same with your reference photo and then look at them side by side and you'll be able to clearly judge your contrast in your portrait, see whether or not you need to adjust anything at that stage. It's much easier to do that when both of them are in grayscale and it's always good to do that throughout the drawing process. And going back to colour, there are tools that you can use like an eyedropper tool and, and different swatches techniques that you can use to try and pinpoint the exact colour that you need to try and replicate. But the one thing to bear in mind is, let's say the, the cloud cover went over the sun for a, a split second after this photo was taken, this water and the colour of the dog is going to change slightly. So the exact colour is not going to be the main focus for me anyway. Like I say, it's just my contrast that I want to make sure that I get really accurate to that photo. But I do have a video here on YouTube about colour selection and using the eyedropper tool. So if that's of interest, I'll put that in the description below. Now for me, for my base layer here, I use the sanded soft pastel stick method that I speak about a lot in my Patreon tutorials, but pan pastels would also give you the same look. What you want to make sure though is during your base layer stage is that you don't fill the tooth of the paper. If you fill the tooth of the paper too soon, it's going to limit how many layers you can put on top, which means you're not going to be able to add all of the details within the ripples that we're working on at the moment. So one thing that I am not doing is I'm not putting down my brightest colours first. 
So at the moment here, I'm not using a white as such. I'm always using my blues first, my greys, and then I'm saving my whites till my last layers. That means that I've got as much depth in this water as I possibly can get. And at this stage here, when I'm using my white pencils, I'm not putting too much pressure on that pencil. The, you don't necessarily want your white details to be really bright at this stage. Maybe you just want to tint that layer underneath and make it slightly brighter. So by using that white pencil with a really light hand, you can do just that. When you want your details to be that much brighter, start putting a little bit more pressure on that white pencil. For me, my go-to white is the Carbofello and I find that because it's a bit more of that softer lead, it works really well for just tinting that layer underneath, just like what I've mentioned. And then I use my Chinese white Caran d'Ache pencil for my very last brightest highlights. Because that's an even softer lead, it's far more of an opaque pigment, so it's going to show up that much more. By saving that pencil for my last layers, I know then that I can hype up my contrast at the end if I need to. Now another reason why I like to work in small areas is because if I was to block in all of my base layer at one time, I wouldn't have gone in necessarily here on this one section with a greener base layer. I think when we're working in larger areas, we have a tendency to put the same colour everywhere and that can end up with a bit more of a flatter outcome. So by breaking it down into small sections like this and making sure we're getting our base layers as accurate to that photo as we can, it is really making it that much easier for building depth with our additional layers. Now of course with pastels we have the ability that if we put our base layer down and we need to tweak it at all, it's very easy to do that as long as you don't feel the tooth of the paper and you're using a paper that allows for lots of layers. And Pastel Matte by Claire Fontaine is my paper of choice for pastels for that exact reason. Something that I did frequently throughout the water part here, and I do this with fur as well, is once I'd put my base layer down, I go back in with my pastel pencils and add in the shadows in separately. I don't always start off with the darkest colour for my base layer. And the reason for that on this instance is because I wanted to make sure that I could get my brights for the ripples as, as bright and as light as they needed to be. So I didn't want to go in with an overly dark base layer. So with the base layer here, I've used my oval shaped soft tool, which is certainly my favourite. I find that it, it doesn't give me any harsh edges. And for my base layers, I want them to be fairly nice and blended. Especially for water, because I want that soft transition where the water is rolling over onto the next section of the ripple. I want to make sure that I've got that nice soft transition. So a really nice blended base layer works well. But you'll also notice that at that base layer stage, I was already following the flow and movement of the water with that soft tool and the sponge. By moving the, the soft tool and pulling that pigment in the way that the water is going to move, it's already helping to indicate at that movement when we come to put more details with our pastel pencils. And here with the water that I've drawn at the moment, you can see that it really does slope down towards the dog. That's really indicating that the dog is, is submerged in that water and as he's being propelled forward, that water is being pushed away from him. So that all of that movement and how I'm creating that is all in that pencil stroke, but it's been indicated at that very first base layer. And it's a, a thing that we do automatically. If I was to do that base layer and move that soft sponge left to right a more of a horizontal way, I will then naturally put my details in the same manner. That's then not going to have the same movement and flow as what I've created here by making sure that I am moving that sponge in the direction that that water is travelling in. So for me, the movement, I want to capture that at the very, very first base layer with that sponge, with the pan pastels, the standard soft pastel sticks, whatever that method of choice is. But I do want to make sure that I'm already starting to do that right from the very beginning. Now the one part of the water here that does change direction very quickly is this that's closest to the dog and that's because it's got that swirl movement, you've got the fur that is, is overlapping, it's interweaved with that water so we want to make sure that we have got that transition from where the water meets the dog itself. And you'll see that I'll start to add more of the darker fur into the water so that it doesn't have too much of a harsh line. Because I want that water to have that translucent appearance, it's therefore going to have some of that fur visible through that water. So I want to be making sure that I'm adding those details. 
What I didn't want to do is start off with the black of the fur and then add my water on top. Because that black is such a dark colour, there is that chance that you might not get your highlights of the ripples as bright as what's needed. So I chose to add the darker colour on top. So the water on the top edge here compared to the bottom section of the portrait was a little different in how it moved. This area here was a bit flatter, it didn't have as much disturbance as it does closer to his face. So what I've started to do here is lengthen my pencil strokes. They are more on the horizontal side, they're not completely straight but they are a lot flatter than the lower section of the water and as I say my pencil details are that much longer. That's going to help to indicate that the water here is a little bit calmer, there isn't the same level of disturbance. So this is certainly one of those instances where you want to be looking at that reference photo closely throughout the drawing process to make sure that we're getting these subtle changes in place. All of the same layering techniques, how I'm moving the pencil are exactly the same as what I've been doing throughout the entire process, it is just that they are that much longer. And a technique I'm using here with these bluer and teal pencils is glazing. Now this is very much like when you work with acrylics. So by using a very light pressure, holding the pencil at the end of the barrel, you can put a very light layer of colour over selected areas to adjust that colour accordingly. And this is something that I do on many of my portraits, but it really does depend on how much pressure you put on that pencil at the time. If you apply too much pressure, too much of that pigment is going to come out of that pencil and you are just then going to have more of that solid colour in place rather than a glaze. You just want that pencil gliding over the surface in order to do this kind of technique, but once you've got that mastered it works really well. Something that helped me as well is I didn't put too many lines on my initial sketch. Now for me, I picked a couple of reference points, the main sets of ripples that I first noticed when I look at that reference photo and I sketched those in to start with and then I filled in the areas around it. Now on my Patreon tutorials I speak about reference points quite a lot because I do think they can really help to simplify your reference photo even more. And that's something that I certainly did with the water element of this portrait. I picked a couple of the darker shadowed areas in this area here and only focused on those on my initial outline. I didn't draw in any of the individual ripples in between because I didn't want to complicate this part of the portrait any more than it needed to be. And I think that if I'd had too many of my initial sketch lines down to start with, I would have been not necessarily knowing what ripple I was drawing at that time. So if you only pick a few, the main ones that you notice right from the very beginning and map in those first, it's going to become a lot easier to tackle overall. I think sometimes it's a bit deceiving that we think the more lines we draw in on our initial sketch, it's going to be easier for us to follow. But when there are as many pencil details as there are in this water, I think that can overcomplicate it a lot more than it needs to be. Something else for working with water that would be beneficial is to turn your artwork upside down and the reference photo upside down and then your brain is forced to see the abstract shapes rather than thinking I'm going to be drawing water and I know what that should look like. In those instances you don't follow the reference photo as closely as you think you are because your brain is, is telling you you know what water looks like. So if you are struggling with that or any element, regardless of what it is that you're working on, turn everything upside down because it can really help. So here is a photo of the finished portrait. I really hope this tutorial was of use. If it was, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you'd like to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. And as mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you would like to see the four hour version of this on Patreon, I'll link that in the description below as well. If you have any questions about drawing water or you'd like me to cover a specific element or topic in a video, let me know in the comments below and I'll add it of my list of content to create.